Welcome to run your first Java E7 application on Yabo's EP7 screencast. In this screencast we will give examples of common build tools for application development on Yabo's EP7. We will also cover which integrated development environments to use, if any. Then we will discuss how, many de how dependency management works for Java E7 and Yabo's EP7 specific artifacts. Finally, we will demonstrate how fast and efficient it is to develop on Yabel's EP7. Today, the most common build tools for Java and Java E development is Maven. Maven is also the preferred tool for building applications for Yabel's EP7. Both the quick starts and the example applications that are provided use Maven. Additionally, Yabel's EP7 ships with Maven plugins that can deploy and undeploy your applications, as well as configure Yabo's EEP7 using CLI commands. This makes it possible to automatically de deploy not only an application, but also configuration to a running instance of Yabo's EEP7. Which build tools uh, a developer or organizations use depends on external factors like environment, complexity, previous experience and personal preferences. Yabo's EAP doesn't mandate a particular build tool, and as long as it supports Java and can produce valid Java EE artifacts such as Java archives or web archives, it can be used to build applications for Yabo's EAP 7. Example on other popular build tools are Ant and Gradle. Optionally, Ant users may also use Ivy to manage dependencies. The choice of integrated development environment, if any, also depends on external factors. IDEs typically has built-in tools for syntax check, unit testing, and starting and stopping application server like Yabo's EP7. But the really smart IDEs also provide features like live reload, which automatically automatically reloads the application when a resource that is part of the application is updated. Red Hat provides a free IDE called Yabo's Developer Studio, which is based on Eclipse and has powerful features for developing on Yabo's EP7. Example on other commonly used IDEs for developing on Jabo's EAP are Eclipse for Java EE developers, IntelliJ from JetBrains, and NetBeans. When building Java applications, developers typically use different frameworks and libraries that provide additional features. This is especially true for Java EE development. In an ideal world, all Java EE applications would use only the APIs that are provided as part of the Java EE standard. And since Yabo's EEP7 is a certified Java EE7 platform, any applications built using the Java EE7 standard are supported. However, in reality, developers sometimes have to use other third-party frameworks or proprietary APIs. For a developer, it may be hard to know which libraries and versions that are supported as part of Yabo's EEP7. Therefore, it's recommended to use the Yabo's Maven repository that Red Hat provides. The Maven repository for Yabo's EEP7 is provided both online, where the dependencies are downloaded at build time, or as a downloadable zip file that can be saved locally or in a hosted Maven repository. To access the online repository, go to maven.repository.redhat.com. Please note that for Yabo's EP7 beta, the Maven repository is hosted under the Early Access repository. For an example on how to use the online repository, see the quick starts that is provided with Yabo's EP7. Let's see how easy it is to develop an application for Yabo's EP7 using Yabo's Developer Studio. Here I'm going to import one of the quick start applications that is provided in Yabo's EP7 and is called Kitchen Sink. To import the project, right click in the Project Explorer and select Import. Since the quick starts are using Maven, I'm choosing to import a Maven project. Then navigate to the quick start directory and select kitchen sink subdirectory. Click open and click finish. After the project has been imported we can use the open resource view to open the index.html file. On this page change the title
save it and then right click on the project and select run as run on server if you don't have a server configured yet you will have to add it first select the correct JWAS EAP7 version and click next you will now have to select or create a runtime for the server I'm going to create a new runtime and click on next in the runtime dialog make sure that the home directory matches the location where you installed JWAS EAP7 you can click browse to navigate to it using a file dialog then click finish Jables Developer Studio will now start Jables EAP and deploy the application to it. After only a few seconds it should start. To verify that it works we can open the application in an internal web browser directly in Jables Developer Studio. To prove that it's fully working Java EE application I can register a user which is going to be stored in the database and can be retrieved using a REST call. The REST call can be accessed via this link. However, if a developer does thousands of changes in a day, these seconds quickly becomes a lot of wasted time. Therefore, JBoss Developer Studio also has a feature called Live Reload that automatically pushes any changes, any changed resources directly to JBoss EAP. To enable Live Reload, right-click on the deployment in the server view and select Show in Web Browser via Live Reload Server. I'm going to place the browser next to my IDE, so that you can see that any change I do, and as soon as I save, it's immediately reflected in the browser. So, for example, if I wanted to change the data table and remove one of the columns here I can as soon as I delete that and hit save it's immediately reflected in the web browser to summarize JBoss EAP7 is a very flexible application server and combined with an IDE like JBoss Developer Studio Java EE7 development becomes super efficient thanks for watching this screencast for more information please visit, visit developer.redout.com